you. I know the value of your time, and I know the value of your money. 828 was paid, through, paid for by donations. I showed you somebody that gave me eight cents. You think I hold eight cents in my hand and know what that meant? And, and then just go, spend it frivolously? I never told you this. Because quite honestly, it was a promise to myself. But I'm telling you this now for the only reason, the only reason, to make sure you understand I am not ashamed of making money. When I made my promise to you, um, when I asked my radio audience to help pay for A28, I told you I wouldn't waste your time. I told you you would experience things you would never. I told you that it would um, be the beginning of real change and miracles would happen. But I also told you I would not waste your money. Well, when I asked Sarah Palin, the press ripped her apart for a year. How much is Sarah Palin being paid to speak? Zero is the answer. Zero. She never even asked. Zero. Well, who's paying for her airfare? I did. I paid for the airfare. I paid for the security. Do you, know, do you have any idea what security cost for 828? For three people who could have lost their lives? There were 10 hotels that I personally, out of my pocket, I'm not saying this to boast, I'm telling you the facts. Um, let's just say I just got the American Express bill that I am gladly paying for. I think I could buy a small country with the points. Why did I do it? Because I'm not going to waste your money on that. I'm not going to ask you to give eight cents and then put people up with those eight cents in hotel rooms that you couldn't stay in. But I can't ask Sarah Palin to fly from Alaska. Did I mention how far away it is? Fly from Alaska and then not have a great place for her to come and just relax because she's not getting paid for it. I'm not going to do that. I paid for it. But I'm not a charitable organization. I spend more on research. You know, this program, I bet I lose money personally on this program because I pay for research. Fox pays for research, but I hire people myself. I spend more on research on my radio show, more than anybody else in the history of broadcast radio. History. I employ 40 people in New York City. I have the best health insurance for everybody. Nobody pays a deductible. It's the best that money can buy. I'm told that the insurance that I pay for my employees is actually, I'm the only one in New York still buying it because it's too expensive. But I believe in treating people right. My choice. I never intended on telling you any of these things. But I want you to know. It's none of their business. Quite honestly, it's none of yours. My financial advisors tell me I'm stupid. To put, honestly, they have said to me all the time, Glenn, you're going to live under a bridge. Fine, fine. It's not true. You know why they say I'm going to live under a bridge? Because I treat my employees right, which is why my company has gone from, what, six employees three years ago to 40 employees, because I treat them right. Um, I give charity. And my CEO of my company, he thinks I'm nuts. He's like, Glenn, you're going to live under a bridge. No, we're not. To those who have been given much, much is required. I take that admonish admonishment at face value. Not out of fear, but with joy, with confidence. And that you need to understand that. Not about me, but let my little example inspire you to do the same thing. I want to give. It's my privilege. It's my honor. It's my responsibility. But I also believe in what I call the bucket theory. And I've never even heard anybody ever say this theory before. But I think we're all given buckets. And we all start with the same size bucket. And what do people do if you're collecting rainwater, because you're thirsty, you're collecting rainwater, people have a tendency of doing this. They will cover their bucket to protect it. I believe, take your bucket blessings rain down on you all the time take your bucket and if you see somebody who needs water there's more it's raining all the time empty it eventually somebody who's handing out the buckets is going to go you know what get that guy more buckets 
Get him a bigger bucket. Stop protecting it. Give it. And more will come. Now I'm going to tell you the reason why I know that to be true. Next. All right, I'm going to use this agonizing thing that happened to me over uh, the last weekend as an example um, on why these three things are important, faith, hope, and charity, because they're all tied together. And it is the answer. It is the answer to our problems. It's not an election, although get out and vote. Um, I was telling you that the media, I did a speech uh, last Saturday in uh, Alaska. Sarah Palin was there. The media said first it was going to be a hate fest. It was going to stir people up, but blah, 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 blah. Then we were going to announce our candidacy as, I guess, co-presidents. And then they, then they wanted to make it into I was uh, uh, being greedy. And so my PR firm, while I'm on vacation, releases that Glenn Beck is going to donate his salary or donate his uh, uh, pay on this to charity, which was absolutely true. But I don't want that released, and here's why. Why did I do it? Because I run a company. When I went to my CEO of my company and I said, 828, look, I gotta, I gotta give all this money and it's gonna cost a lot, a lot of money, he said, no. Now, if you don't have a lot of money, what do you do? You take a second job, right? If you don't have enough money to do the things you want to, you take a second job. Washington and the media, they just print more money. But you and I have to go out and earn more money. So that's what I was doing. On my vacation, I went and gave a speech on my vacation. I took those proceeds and gave them to SOWF because it's something that I promised them I would do. I honor my commitments. I also know, even though my CEO, my company thinks I'm crazy for giving all of this money to charity, um, I believe it pays off in the end. It's not a coincidence. It's not a coincidence that when you give, you get back. You usually get back, and not always money, but you usually get back more than you give. It's the way things work. You have to have faith when you give charity. Faith, not hope. Hope, remember I define hope as truth. The truth is, when you give charity, you can have faith that it will pay off. Not always in cash. But here's how it works. You have a question on something. And this is why I ask you all the time, please, question with boldness. You have a question. Well, you don't jump right to faith. You do your own homework. You look for an answer that makes sense. And you go, okay, well, wait a minute, that works. All right, that works. So I'm going I'm to go with that one. You have faith that this is true. And then what happens? Because you have faith, you try it on, you start to move in that direction. What happens? You come up with more truth, a higher level of truth, which then increases your faith, leads you to more truth, increases your faith. You see what I mean? Blind faith has no truth. You must have truth first, then test it with faith. It will lead you to more truth. Prove me wrong. Prove me wrong on the things that I say. I may get dates wrong. I may make spelling errors, I, whatever. Prove these principles wrong. And I'm not talking to the media. I don't care anymore. I'm talking to you. Don't take anything I say as right or wrong because I say it. Or a blog told you. Or a preacher told you. Or an economist a preacher can't give you faith. And is faith enough? No. Faith is not enough. Oh, I know there's a lot of religious people out there. But when you're in, you're swimming and sharks are around you, I'm sorry, if, even if you have faith, you're going to be freaking out. At least I would. I need firm reliance. Not just faith, firm reliance. That's our goal. Time Magazine did an article here, The Moment. This is about 828. And this is about how many people showed up, but Glenn Beck didn't have anything to tell him, and so they all went away confused. The press doesn't get it, and they never will. Washington doesn't get it, and they never will. That's good. That's good. That's good. The press and special interest in the government are not going to give you 
faith, hope, or charity. They'll pervert these things. I'm not going to give you faith, hope, or charity. They will tell you that um, Americans are stupid, they're incapable, they can't do it themselves. You need Washington, or you need this program, or you need this person helping you out. They'll tell you that, this is their biggest lie, that the biggest day of charity is April 15th. I can't give you hope or faith or charity, but I'm not going to lie to you. April 15th, how many of us go April 15th and say, man, I feel so good, all that charity I gave? No. I will tell you every night what I believe. I will tell you every night what I find true and how I arrived at that conclusion. That's the most important part. How did you arrive at these conclusions? But if I may suggest, we just need to dismiss the press and special interests for what they are. They are, I mean, they are, what are you looking at, butthead? They're Biff Tannen. They're a waste of time and energy. Because what they do is they have us argue about the lies. The lies. They, have us, they stir us up and have us arguing about lies. Well, if we're worried about lies, we're never going to detect, detect the truth. Course change on this program. The truth. We're going to look just for the truth. I'm going to pay less attention to all the lies. We're not going to defeat backroom, backstabbing power politics. You have to transcend them. So we will dismiss them. How? With the power and the fire of the truth. The more we argue about our rights being lost or stolen, the more, the more time we lose. The door is being closed, America. So we need to stop arguing about those things, and we start, need to start picking up our responsibility. Our responsibility in faith, in truth, and in charity. Our responsibility to help others, to give until it hurts, to inform ourselves, to really know American history, to really know if God exists or if he doesn't, to raise our kids with values and principles, to teach them about nature's God and nature's law. It is time we pick up our God-given, not rights, responsibilities. And when we pick up those responsibilities, our rights will automatically be restored. This I believe. This I try my best every day to live. The answers are not easy, but they are simple. I ask you tonight, will you join me in trying to find the simple but not easy answers and solutions? I want to welcome you to our new set and I want to explain a couple of things to you. Um, I told you earlier at the beginning of the program what's happening in the economy. It's not good. The IMF is selling gold like crazy. Central banks are getting away from the unstable dollar. Treasuries dropped fourth day in a row. Poverty rate jumped last week. Record amount in the last year. Now, one in seven Americans are now considered poor. Is this the best we can do? How do we fix that? We put our debt in perspective. Kevin Williamson in the National Review Online points out two years ago, Forbes calculated our debt to be $70 trillion. It's over 130 trillion now. When the article was written, all of the money in the world couldn't pay the debt off. Literally, the entire world's money supply was 60 trillion dollars. Congress now hasn't passed a budget. They have 17 days to pass 10 more spending bills, and if they don't, the government shuts down. Gee, who could possibly profit off of that? And Time Magazine, I told you, said uh, in uh, something last week, they said, um, 828 confused you, left you confused. Tens of thousands had gathered along the reflecting pool in the name of restoring honor, the name and the theme of the rally, yet no one could identify what that meant, really. Here's Moses and the Ten Commandments, the Mayflower, 1776. Finally, end of slavery here, Great Depression, Pearl Harbor, Cold War years, Apollo 11, September 11th, the housing market crash, the Obama administration, I believe that's the beginning of the restoration of this country. And I'm not talking about restoration because, oh, I want George Bush back. You know, I told you, faith, hope, and charity for a year. You've been here. You know. The media, they don't get it. Politicians don't get it. Listen, America, you must understand this. You must understand this. The war has already been won. But it requires you to 
do some hard work. 